Well, if Tesla is the poster child for EVs in America, then the industry is currently seeing some warning signs. Shares of Elon Musk's company have lost more than a quarter of their value so far this year. Just this week, they're down more than 10%. Joining us right now to talk about Tesla and what it seems to be what seems to be flagging interest overall in pure electric vehicles is Mark Fields. He is former president and CEO of Ford. He's also a CNBC contributor. And um, Mark, what what is happening? I mean, there's still a lot of EV cars that are selling, but there's a lot of supply to meet that demand at the same time. Maybe the market kind of rethinking the supply demand picture. Yeah, I mean, I, I would characterize it. This is a market that's going from optimistic uh, to realistic. And you're seeing kind of waning demand. Listen, the growth is still there, <clears throat> right? We know that, uh, you know, EV sales here in the U.S. passed uh, over a million last year. It was up uh, almost slightly less than 50 percent. So it's growing, Becky, but it's not growing at, this, at the rate of which everybody was expecting. And so that's a, why you're seeing all sales, the autos. What's the national sales? Is it, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 million of, of uh, all yeah, automobiles? The, the yeah, the national sales last year was a little over 15 million okay. uh, vehicles. And so you had EVs that represented it. I think it was about 1.1 million. So it was a little over 7% share. So it was up from the prior year, which was about 5.5% share. So it's growing. But the bottom line is it's not accelerating at the pace all of the automakers expected. And that's why you're seeing right now all the automakers make changes, delaying programs, uh, shifting out the construction of plants uh, and things of that nature. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the consumer, uh, you know, has the issues around the cost. They have issues around the charging anxiety. You got insurance. And, and then the big issue for consumers, which nobody really talks about, is with the reduction in prices you've seen here in the U.S. and around the world. But let's take here in the U.S., you know, a, a Model Y is about 20 percent less in cost or price this year than it was last year. And that has huge impacts on residual values. So if you're a consumer that owns an EV right now, your vehicle is probably worth a lot less. And I think that weighs on consumers as they think about EVs going forward. What, what about competition coming from places like China? Phil Lebeau has been doing an excellent job reporting on what this means for other countries around the world. What's it going to mean for producers here in the United States? Well, China is a, is a real threat. I mean, uh, let's face it. The Chinese government about 10, 12 years ago said, listen, we, we missed out on dominating internal combustion engines, and we're going to dominate on electrification. So they encouraged a lot of companies. They gave them a, a lot of incentives, whether it's government grants or tax incentives. And those companies spent a lot of money on putting capacity in place and building EVs. Um, they've also come up very quickly in the quality of those EVs. And so, you know, what started out as a strategic uh, decision by the Chinese government to uh, dominate EVs has now turned, Becky, into one that's tactical because they have so much overcapacity right now in China. Uh, they sold a little over uh, about 7 million uh, EVs in China last year, and they have capacity for almost 20. So now they're exporting. And for the U.S., you know, there's high tariffs uh, right now. But if they decide to put plants in Mexico, potentially they can use NAFTA to bring those vehicles in, uh, you know, uh, tariff free. And that's why I believe the U.S. government is going to do something, not for a permanent, but some period of time to give the Western or domestic automakers here some time to catch up because of the unlevel playing field. If they don't, what does that mean for the big three automakers? Well, it means a lot of pain and hurt ahead. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, it's not only uh, the labor uh, that's much less for these Chinese uh, auto companies. You know, they, the, the, a lot of the elements for the batteries are made locally, so that it's lower price for them. Um, and so it's going to be a, a really hard time. If you think it's hard now, it's going to get even harder. Tesla is probably the best position of the Western automakers because they are the, the most vertically integrated. But you look at some of the newcomers, you know, like, you know, Rivian yesterday announced a, a new products. But you look at some of the, the players there, they need scale to survive. And I think that will put them at the most risk uh, if the Chinese uh, products come through. Mark, very quickly. Um new administration, if Trump actually wins the White House, would probably roll back some of the requirements um, that are pushing the automakers to make so many of these EVs. It's got to be a big difference for the big three 
um, both on profitability and what their future plans are. Yeah, it is a big deal, Becky. I mean, right now, even the Biden administration is, according to rumors, is looking at relaxing the EPA guidelines because, listen, by their, if you look at California, for example, California and 14 states that follow them basically said, listen, by 2026, you have to have 35% of your vehicles pure EVs to sell in the state. And if not, for every one, you're going to get a $20,000 fine. That is completely unrealistic at this point. And when you lay on that mm -hmm. the lack of the charging infrastructure, I think you're going to see either the Biden administration relax those or if Trump uh, gets elected, I think you will absolutely see those rolled back.